Welcome to My Fair Katie, a film review podcast. I, Katie Shimmick, who watch movies with my dad. That'd be me, Scott Shimmick. Together we will dive into sometimes deep but hopefully always fun discussions of classic films. Today's movie is Young Mr. Lincoln. Made in 1939, Young Mr. Lincoln is a historical docudrama about the early life and career of the 16th president. Henry Fonda plays the title role of the young Honest Abe. The only other recognizable cast member is Donald Meek, who plays the prosecutor, and who we recently saw in Stagecoach. Big year for Donald Meek. What else did he do? I just said he was in Stagecoach. That's only two movies. But two great movies. Speaking of big years, Young Mr. Lincoln is directed by John Ford, who also directed Stagecoach. In 1832? Wait, would you be in law school at that time? No. <laughs> that was a little bit Earlier? Older. No, a little bit later. A little bit? A little bit. <laughs> like two or three years? Yeah, a little, a little more than that, but yeah, pretty close. In 1832, a family traveling through New Salem, Illinois, in their wagon eat groceries. A very young Abe Lincoln agrees to trade the groceries for their only valuable possession, a barrel of old books, including a law book, Blackstone's Commentaries. After reading the book, Abe, with the support of his girlfriend, Anne Rutledge, decides to pursue a legal career. Young Abe is devastated when Anne dies. Abe moves to Springfield to start a law practice in 1837 with his friend John Stewart. After a wild, all-day July 4th celebration, a man named Scrub White is killed after pulling a gun in a fight. Matt and Adam Clay are the two brothers accused of the murder. Lincoln prevents the mob justice at the jail by shaming the angry drunken mob. He also convinces them that he really needs these clients for his first real case. He was a really likable character, so they were like, oh yeah, that's fine, I'll do that for you. Because they really liked him. Everybody in the town liked him. They did. Well, they respected him more than that. But they were so ashamed, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when he called out people one by one. He called out the one guy. He's like, he's going to go home and read his Bible, and he, <laughs> he might come across this passage. Yeah, that was that was harsh. It was very effective. A young, lovely lady, Mary Todd, admires his courage and invites Lincoln to her sister's party. Despite Stephen Douglas being desperate for her attention, Mary is interested in Abe. She attends the trial of the Clayboys and sits in the front row. The brother's mother, Abigail, who witnessed the end of the fight, and Lincoln are pressured by the prosecutor to save one of the brothers to see the other convicted. The key witness is a friend of the victim who claims to have seen the murder at a distance of about 100 yards under the light of the moon. Lincoln proves it couldn't have been the Clays by showing that on the night in question the moon had set before the murder. Lincoln's clever cross-examination gets that witness, Jack Cass, to confess to stabbing, <laughs> <laughs> to stabbing Scrub. I said that very carefully. <laughs> all right so the reviews for young mr lincoln this is the first movie we've done that isn't on any list of the afi top 100 not the heroes really really yeah blinken is i wouldn't i would say that he was like a hero yeah <laughs> yep not on any of them at least not from this movie i mean clearly in historical well, yeah. perspective yeah but not not Henry Fonda's version. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gives it 100%. Not a lot of reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, though. Uh, Popcorn, 81. Metacritic, 91. Pretty good Metacritic. That is really good. And IMDb is 7.6. Um, awards, it was only nominated for one Oscar. Best Screenplay. Original Story. Uh, that's it. Original Story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not based on another book or anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what Original Story means. Oh, <laughs> You know, it's not, like, based on a book or a play. Uh, like, Gone with the Wind. But Gone with the Wind was based on a book, right? Yeah, and Wizard of Oz. Based on a book. I know, and that's why I was giving my examples. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a very good job. I know. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> you are. You're very smart. All right. Our hero. Who's the hero of the movie? <laughs> um, I don't know. The Clay Brothers? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Um, I'll just go ahead and say it. Young Mr. Lincoln? The young Mr. Lincoln, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's this one's kind of silly because it's, you know, 
we know these kind of answers like, gee, what were Abe Lincoln's motivations? <laughs> <laughs> was Abe Lincoln a good guy? Mm, yes, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I think he was pretty good. Although, uh, all right, I was going to save this one for nitpicking, but I'm going to get to it now. I'm a little concerned that Abe Lincoln may have only had the Blackstone commentaries and not a book on ethics. Is that how you went to law school? What? You just read a book? No, I actually had to sit through classes. Ew. <laughs> yeah, for three years. Did you study with him? With Abe Lincoln? Yeah. No. No. Well, he was studying at the same time as me. Yeah, yeah. I went to school and he didn't. Uh-uh. <laughs> 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 uh yeah, so when he's first in his law practice, remember, like, the two guys are sitting there arguing? And he wasn't zealously representing either of them. I mean, I maybe he took this as a role of a mediator. But, um, yeah. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't seem to clearly disclose that he was there in the role of mediator either. Yeah. And then he took payment. Yeah, because they didn't even ask. That she was like, I, wait, he was like, I'm your lawyer now. Oh, you're talking about the wife. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what you're talking about. Yeah, I was going to talk about that too, right? That thank you for bringing that one up. Yeah, that uh, the wife, or the mother. Sorry, the mother. Yeah, he didn't have an engagement letter. No. She didn't have to sign anything. Nope. He only so, saw her in person like three times, and that was the only time that he talked to her, right? Before that? No, the um, well, at court he was like, I've only seen this woman three times in my life. Yeah, but that's fine. He wasn't representing her. And if he was her lawyer, she... So, okay, the brothers each should have had their own lawyer because... And this is what I was getting to about One him. of them were going to be... Like, one of them could have turned on the other one. So they had very... They had conflicting interests. I mean, if one of them wanted to get off, he could have just said, well, he did it, and taken the stand, and said it was his brother. That's why they need their own lawyer. And if Abe said, I'm representing you, to the mother, she's got different interests, too. What were her interests? Well, she was a witness to the crime, and theoretically, she could have also been implicated in some portion of it. Yeah, so she should have had separate legal counsel as well. But they didn't have any money. Well, that's not Abe's problem. <laughs> <laughs> Abe needs to pick a side and work on it. If he wants to work for free, he can work for free. <laughs> this really annoys you, doesn't it? A little bit. That's why I don't like movies about the law. Because <laughs> they get stuff wrong and it drives me nuts. But all that said, I mean, he also was a very rude lawyer, too. Yeah, he called is... somebody a bad word in court. Oh, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. But no, he would uh, he would interrupt the other side's questioning. Yeah, and he made fun. Like, he was joking about the other guys. And he also made fun of the other lawyer by saying, and it would not be fair to me if they didn't know you. Or something oh, yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was worried that some of the other jurors might not know who he is, <laughs> which would <laughs> which would be to his disadvantage. <clears throat> yes, that was a rude comment, but it wasn't made in open court during testimony. He interrupted the opening argument. He interrupted the direct examination of prosecution witnesses. You can't do that. Can't. No. You gotta wait your turn. <laughs> You can't just be blurting stuff out in court. Imagine how crazy it would be. Oh, yeah. Although, I've been to plenty of oral arguments where it's just the two lawyers and the judge. And some lawyers are super rude and won't let you talk. I'm not going to name names on a podcast. But there are some that will just yell and blurt out stuff. It's very rude. Are you one of them? No. I am not. <laughs> Why? Because they annoy you and you don't want to be like them? Yeah, so what I do is I make a list of all the points they're trying to make. And if they won't let me get it out, I will then say, listen, you know, you've had your turn. And I'll... <laughs> and usually the judge will say, yes, let let the other attorney have his chance to talk. 
and I'll have all my points, and then I'll just cover them all thoroughly while the other person's just stewing. <laughs> but Mr. Lincoln didn't do that. He was super rude and would have totally been held in contempt. Although he did do one thing that I kind of liked. So he did do one other thing that for which he probably would have been admonished by the judge. At least, you know, other judges, not this judge, because this judge <laughs> was enjoying himself quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> when, when there was an objection and it was stricken from the record about the dog and the dog's butt. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, don't talk, don't think about the dog. <laughs> he says to the jury. <laughs> which, of course, would make the jury only remember the dog, right? All right, so uh, what choices would you have made that would have been different? I know we clearly know what choices I would have made that were different. <laughs> um, not accept the lady's money, the mom's money, at the end. You know, I thought about that. I thought about that, but I think he was trying to help her, uh, help her pride by accepting oh. a payment. Because yeah. if he didn't accept any payment then she would have felt bad like he had done all this for free and yeah. you know as I, I almost thought he would be like oh that's exactly my fee thank you very much you know like actually counted it up so, uh -huh. oh yeah like a dollar 43 that's my fee <laughs> very good thank you <sighs> my fair katie is brought to you by Stuart and lincoln attorneys at law every day hundreds of people suffer from splinters caused by careless axe handle manufacturers these splinters cause discomfort and can even lead to infections. Right now, axe handle manufacturers are facing the consequences. Don't miss your opportunity to receive your compensation. We have a staff of two attorneys ready to fight for your rights. Dord and Lincoln may have had only one client so far, but they are always ready to take on the right case. By right, that's the one that hands over all their money. Our young attorneys have learned all the law they need from a book they found in a barrel. Time may be short. Be sure to call Stewart and Lincoln Attorneys at Law today. That's Stuart and Lincoln Attorneys at Law. Hey, just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. Who's the bad guy in the movie? Jay Palmer, Cats, and Scrubs. Yeah, they're both. Yeah, Scrubs was a real jerk. I know, right? That's Messing with, that with Yeah. You know that you're going to, like, get beat up. He's so lucky he didn't just get punched in the face. He did. Well, he was a deputy, too, so he probably would have gone to jail for punching a deputy. Huh. Yeah. Better than getting hanged. <laughs> Marginally. <yeah. laughs> I'm just saying. It is. Uh, what about uh, Stephen Douglas? He's a bad guy. Historically speaking, he's not really a bad guy. Wait, what did he do again? He was Lincoln's rival. They had a famous set of debates. Yeah, he was kind of annoying. He was annoying, wasn't he? Yeah. Trying to get Mary Todd. He looked a lot like Steve from Stranger Things, though. From far away. But then once he zoomed in, he wasn't as handsome. Yeah, so there you go. Watch Young Mr. Lincoln if you like Steve from Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> but don't look too closely. <laughs> Watch out on a small TV. <laughs> it's pretty rad hair for 1939. You like how I dropped that eighties adjective in there? Yeah, sure. Come on. Yes. No, the rad was good. Yeah, I know. That was pretty Quiet. Good. That was pretty rad hair. That was some pretty rad hair for nineteen thirty nine. Totally tubular. <laughs> All right. So the setting I mean, the setting had to be the setting because it's a docudrama, right? So it had to be Springfield, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, could they have made the movie anywhere else? Of course, it looked an awful lot like California. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the craft work. How about the filming and cinematography, what did you think? There wasn't anything special about it. No. No, it was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. straightforward. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> How about the music? What did you think of the music? Chirp, chirp. No, seriously. It was, like, too much. Yeah. It was too much. It, like, overplayed the dialogue sometimes. Yeah. And. It just wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was, like, it was really strong emotionally, even for more delicate moments. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the costumes? They weren't, like, Scarlet's 
carpet dress, but they were good. They seem pretty historically accurate. Yeah. I liked uh, Lincoln's pockets were, like, way in the front. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> they weren't, like, on the side. They were, like, right up in the front. <laughs> made him stay funny. And I liked that they made a big deal out of his hat. We saw that at the Smithsonian. Yeah, we did. We did. I wonder if he wore it when he was such a young man. Maybe. Yeah. Where would you get a hat like that, though, in a small town? I don't know. Maybe they were really popular then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need a stovepipe hat. Yeah. If you're like six foot five, you need to look taller. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you like the nose and yeah, chin? Yeah, I was just about to say that. Oh, yeah. It looked pretty real, though. It did look really good. So they did have the technology to do a better job for Mr. Chips. Maybe. They could have given him, like, a bigger nose and bigger ears. I did notice one thing about the nose. It, they, the nose was so big, and they didn't change the lighting. And so, <laughs> like, when, when Lincoln was sitting there in the courtroom, there was always this, like, triangular shadow below his nose down to his lips. <laughs> If nobody else had a shadow from their nose, it was just him because they had put their big nose on him. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so I'll put that under nitpicking <laughs> because that's the next category. I have another nitpick. Would Abe really have let a stick decide his fate when he's standing there over Anne's grave and he's like, I'll let the stick decide if it falls to me. I'll stay here. If it falls to you, I'll go to Springfield like you wanted. And he lets go, and it falls there, and he goes to Springfield. What if the wind had been blowing? Would we have ever had the 16th president? Also, it was like what they did in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. They flipped the coin. And it landed on his side? Yeah, but that's like a story. This is supposed to be real. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if Abe Lincoln really would have done that. God, I hope he wouldn't have really done that. <laughs> that would have changed my opinion of Abe Lincoln. Do you have any other nits? No. Wait, yes. Why did Mary Todd, like, halfway through when she was sitting in, like, a carriage with Stephen, she looked like she hated him for no reason at all. She gave him, like, a really mean stink eye. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. I don't know what that was about. Maybe we watch it again, but I didn't catch it at the time. I thought it was weird. All right, unanswered questions. I have one. What happens to Abe after this movie's over? <laughs> um, what if Anne doesn't die if Anne doesn't die does Abe get the connections that he got through Mary Todd that helped him become president or does he just become a lawyer in Springfield and then we would have never had a 16th president well we would have had a 16th well, president not, <laughs> not, probably not one that ended the civil civil war yeah or had a really cool hat. Or had a really cool hat, yeah. <laughs> the two best things about Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Freeing the slaves, cool hat. Because <laughs> let's be honest, it wasn't the beard. No. No. I was not in his name. You know what's sad? In, in an era of tremendous facial hair, big sideburns, handlebar mustaches, Abe's got that beard with no mustache thing going. It's like the worst possible facial hair combo. Why are you so mean? I'm not mean. I told you how much I love his hat. Yeah, but the hat is, like, you, he can take it on and off. The beard is a part of him. Yeah. Thank goodness he, they didn't make Henry Fonda wear that beard. <laughs> he was too handsome for that. Even in the chin and nose. <laughs> Abe's not the best looking president. Definitely not Donald Trump either. No. What do you think? Wait. John Kennedy? I think that would be the most popular answer. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't GW. <laughs> George Washington. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just remember there's another GW. What about George Washington? I just said George Washington. <laughs> the big picture. What's the message of the film? Abe Lincoln is a good person. <laughs> a good lawyer yeah I don't know what that's I, I, uh, it's not like it's got some deep meaning it's just a story about Abe Lincoln yeah yeah so this one's a lot easier than some of the other ones we do I can't wait to do Casablanca 
So does it have the same meaning today? Mm, maybe. Yeah. Abe Lincoln is a good person. Yes. All right. So overall in cinema history, where are we sticking this movie? Probably in the top 100. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's good. It drags at times. Doesn't compare to Rocky. No, but it drags at times, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, there are some scenes in there they could have just totally cut out. Yeah. Completely. It didn't need to be like almost two hours. No. I'm thinking an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. And the Katie goes too. All right, our Cherry Limeade Award. I've got two nominees. I've got Abe's Athletics. The <clears throat> tug of War. He cheated. Rail Splitting. He did cheat. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah. And Abe's Stories. I can listen to him tell those stories all the time. You got any other nominations? No. And the Katie goes to... And the Katie goes to Abe Stories. Okay. That's a good choice. The Odessa Steps Award for the best scene. You've got uh, Abe at the jail talking everybody down. We talked about that one. Yeah. Um, Abe defending the mother while she was on the I stand. that one. That one's nice. Yeah. And then uh, Abe doing the cross-examination of J. Palmer Cass and getting him to confess. <laughs> You got any other scenes? No, I like the um, JP one. <laughs> J. Palmer Cass? Yes. Jack? <laughs> All right. And the kid goes to J. Palmer Cass. Confessing. Okay. <laughs> All right, this goes to 11. The most over top moment. I got two. I've got the mother on the stand. With, uh, you know, everybody, Donald Meek just hounding her and the mother just in... Would you be able to pick between Lily and me? Well, no. I'm just talking about the acting. Oh. And I've also got the girlfriend just so excited about coming to town every single year. Promise we will come every year. You got any other nominees for Over the Top? No. The girlfriend Over the Top. Okay. Because you're like, even even if we have 50... Babies, and we'll still come. <laughs> and the kitty goes to the girlfriend. Okay. Fair enough. McDonald's French Fry Awards. Our most delicious side. I've got three nominees. Sam Boone, the drunken juror. I liked him. The judge. <laughs> he was funny, too. He was hilarious. He, like, interrupted them. Oh, I finally got oh, I it. I get it. Jack. Cass. <laughs> oh, that was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. <laughs> and then the prosecutor. I love the prosecutor. He was good, too. Donald Meek is good. I like him. I wish he was in more stuff. Any other uh, nominees? What about Abe Lincoln? Well, he's not a side. I was kidding. Oh. I like the judge. And the Katie goes to the judge. Okay. It's the pictures that got small. All right. Best quote. I got three. Well then, if that's all the same to you, I'll call you Jack <laughs> Cass. You almost said that. I did almost say it, yeah. All right. <clears throat> we seem to lose our heads in times like this. We do things together that we'd be mighty ashamed to do by ourselves. And the third one is, gentlemen, did you ever hear about the time in the Black Hawk War when I butted two fellas' heads together and busted both of them? <laughs> And the Katie goes to Jack Cass. <laughs> I said Cass. I know. <laughs> All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Who wins the movie? The Clay Brothers. Ooh. Yeah. They get off scot free. Yeah. When a reasonable person would have hoped that only one of them would be hanged. Yeah. It's a good choice. Most people would have said Abe Lincoln. Yeah. All right. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Should this movie be remade? I don't think it should be remade. No? No, I don't think it should. Okay. Henry Fonda did a great job. I mean, it'd be hard to top Henry Fonda. Yeah. I I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis was a pretty good Lincoln, but he was a lot more serious. The nose would be better, though. Daniel Day-Lewis played him as Lincoln in the White House. So he's very different, oh. Abe. 
not yeah. the young rail splitter. If you were to remake it today, what changes would you make? You really can't make that much changes to it. Well, you can't change like what people do unless yeah. you're making it more accurate. So nothing. I would, I would cut out a lot of this boring stuff. Oh, yeah. But I would add in more, more of the uh, maybe the legal study or something, something. Because there was like two seconds of him. He just he gets he's the like, book and he's he like he's on a log. <laughs> yeah. He he's it. Like, you know, it looks so uncomfortable. But he gets the book and he's just like, oh, like a book on law. I'll be a lawyer. <laughs> Wait, is that how that actually happens? I don't know. I can't imagine that's true. <laughs> I mean, you don't just like, oh, here's a here's a book from the 1700s on English law. So I think I'll read this and become an American lawyer. <laughs> Although it is it's still a famous book. I mean, it's a famous book. For lawyers. It's not how you only you should become read a it. lawyer. That's not how you become a lawyer. All right, who do you think would be a good replacement for Abe Lincoln? Sylvester Stallone. No, wait. Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> They'd both be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The Rock. The Rock. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> I was thinking about the guy from Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. <laughs> that is a historical docudrama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's probably just as accurate. That's his law study. Yeah, but his law study. <laughs> yeah. All right. Want to have a catch? Zero to ten. Cryability. Zero. Zero. Is it a 14 for you? No, I'd give it like a two. I, at the end... When they start playing the Battle Hymn of the Republic and it swelled, music swells up and they show the Lincoln Memorial, I'm like, well. Which one's the crying point, though? Like, yeah. out of town? Like, which oh, one where do I actually start crying? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think. For me, though. For you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> I guess it depends on what type of crying. Sad. Sad crying for you is about a three. <laughs> Patriotic crying for you would have to be like a nine. <laughs> Happy crying for you is probably a seven or eight. Mm. You remember how much I cried at the tin can one? Kick the can. <laughs> oh, the Twilight Zone kick. Yeah. The... Yeah. Yes. You didn't get to be upset. You're still upset about this. That was like two years ago. We watched that. I don't care. You're going to cry now? No. <laughs> okay. It sounded like you're going to break it up a little bit. All right. So what are you giving this one? A zero? A one. A one? Yeah. I sold you. You're going to split the difference? Yeah. You're like Abe Lincoln in a rail. You're going to split it right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Takeaways from the movie? Can I, I think... go first? Uh, yeah. You go I'm just going to oh, I, like... I was going to say Abe Lincoln is a great person. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Uh, uh, I thought it was an entertaining movie. I've seen it a few times. I love the the courtroom scenes and not much of the rest. What do you think? I thought that it was a really good movie, and if you want to be a lawyer, you should definitely watch that because he has some really good tips for law school. <laughs> I wish I had done his law school. <laughs> it would have saved me a ton of money and time. But go ahead. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. It was really good. For all ages? Not Lily's age, or younger. Too, so like nine or ten. Too boring. Wait, she's nine. Like not ten and under. Just because it's boring, not because it's inappropriate. Yeah. Even with the vampires. That's not that movie. Oh, that's not that movie. <laughs> All right, so that's a wrap. So that's, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. This episode of My Fair Katie was written and produced by Scott and Katie Schimmick. A special thanks for our music to Marty Chardy Esquire, the best IT lawyer on this side of the Hudson. <laughs>